Winston. What's up, Tyler? We're live. What's up, baby. man? Good to see you. You too. You too. Hey, um, so we've got a good one today. Red Lobster. Have you been to Red Lobster? I've never, I've never been to a Red Lobster. I know you're gonna, you're gonna give me shit because I haven't tried the, the delicious. What is it? The biscuits that you love? It's the biscuits, man. Um, they are amazing. It my, uh, my grandmother. I call her Nana, R.I.P. Um, she loved like Red Lobster. Like it was either there or like Corky Barbecue. So like that was like her two things. You know, it was Corky's Barbecue or Red Lobster. So. That's good. Love it. Uh, I haven't been, you know, admittedly uh, in a while, but I will say I was going to go last week. Um, I was in a hurry. I was out of town and saw Red Lobster and I was like, hey, I think we're going to underwrite one uh, in the next couple of weeks. So I went to pull in, but the access was like really bad um, and I couldn't get in and out very easily. So I actually... <clears throat> Got in the middle lane to turn and just couldn't just couldn't get in, so I just turned out and left. So you got to look at your access, folks. Yeah, hundred percent. And it's interesting you talk about Red Lobster. You know, your, your grandmother loves Red Lobster. I when I was researching this, I saw that Red Lobster of all the sit down chains is the one most voted to. You know, like people just you know wouldn't want to go the rest of their life without going back to a Red Lobster. It's something like thirty percent of the people that were polled. <laughs> Which is the highest of all these restaurants were said. I, you know, I couldn't imagine never going back to a Red Lobster. So they do have a, a diehard uh, fan base that should keep, you know, should keep the rent coming in. It's the, and they have like the endless, you know, you never run out of shrimp. I think that's their thing. Is they'll do like endless shrimp. They like all oh, you can eat shrimp or whatever. Yeah, so. I, I got I to gotta get after that. I, I love shrimp. So. <laughs> well, when you come visit, we'll, we'll be sure to go hit up the Red Lobster among among other places. Well, let's get into it. Um, Let's talk about the location a little bit first, and then we'll, you know, we'll talk about Red Lobster, the company, a little bit more than just their biscuits. Sure. So, so this one is in Murfreesboro, uh, um, just you know, so of, of Nashville. Um, what is it? Thirty-four Nashville proper. Um, you know, if you you want to uh, let my share my screen here. Oh, sorry, Linda. Forget that. Yeah, so this Red Lobster is in Murfreesboro. You can see right there, you know, you have Nashville uh, up here. And then Murfreesboro, is it, what's Murfreesboro? 40 minutes from Nashville, something like that? Yeah, it's about 35 minutes from my door. Um, could be a little bit, uh, a little bit closer, but it's, yeah, super close okay. to Nashville. Uh, super super fast growing. I mean, Tennessee itself was growing, but if you if you look at a map of, of zip codes in Tennessee and you and you know you color code them by uh, population growth rate, Murfreesboro has you know some of the fastest growing zip codes in the in the state of Tennessee and in the country. So you know super fast growing area. Um, a lot of land around here is gonna fill in. So these you know retail centers in Murfreesboro should be poised to at, at minimum, you know, continue the same business they're doing, if not, if not grow significantly in the coming years. So this, uh, red lobster, you know, it's right here. It's a 2.2 acre lot, um, in a re you know, standard retail corridor, this street in front of it has, I think there's 35,000, uh, traffic per day. And the street on the side, I think that was 12,000. So high traffic area, you have everything here. Uh, what a burger, I hop Starbucks, then typical retail lows, et cetera. So, you know, this is, you probably know this area a lot better than I do, Winston, this old Fort Parkway, you have anything, I mean, anything particular to say about this area? Let's see. Yes, I do know this area and I do know where this uh, Red Lobster is. Um, you know, first I'll just kind of add to Murfreesboro. Murfreesboro is, is home to the largest public university, uh, Middle Tennessee State University also known as MTSU, uh, in, you know, in the state, right? It's the largest by, um, by I think, undergraduate student count, right? I forget what the, what the estimate of students are, but anyhow, um, it's larger, I think, on the student population than my alma mater, University of Tennessee, go Vols. So, uh, you know, really, uh, you know, a lot of growth in that area, as Tyler was pointing out, um, it's been on like some of the fastest growing, you know, towns in America list several years 
running uh, a lot of growth a lot of good growth going on in murfreesboro it's 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 a good strong uh, area this is a strong retail corridor as you can see just by looking at it you know it has good visibility uh and, and it's just surrounded by all sorts of uh of retail right and um yeah this is a good area of town yeah um 100 i mean if you look around all, all the businesses are basically here uh, um, so you know, the reason Red Lobster went under, uh, you'd have, you'd have no issue finding something to do with this land too. Like I said, 2.2 acres. So it's a, it's a nice size plot, um, with visibility from two high traffic streets. Um, so the real estate on this is great. Even if, you know, Red Lobster also great, but real estate is also great. So, um, so let me just, uh, you want to say anything more about Red Lobster or Murfreesboro before we get into the, into the sheet? Yeah, um, you know, just speaking to Red Lobster a little bit, you know, it, it is a large company. Um, I believe it's owned by Darden, like Darden Restaurant Group, which owns several different chains. Um, they don't come to my mind currently, but I, I do believe that they own several different chains. You know, I, that I, company. I, I, go ahead. I was gonna say, I think they sold. Uh, when I was researching this, they in, so in twenty twenty, Darden was did own Red Lobster, but they sold it to Thai. What is it, Thai? Uh, Company out of Thailand, large company, four point one, I think four point one billion uh, in assets. Um, Thai something food. Um, they bought all the Red Lobster. They have you know company. Um, so they're the hundred percent owners now of of. Uh, they basically supply have supplied Red Lobster with their with their seafood forever. So now they're they're full. They fully verticalized the the supply chain, and they they do own the Red Lobster now. They're a publicly traded company in Thailand. Okay, cool. I didn't know that. That's great. Good, good research, Tyler. I never would. I didn't know that. I thought Darden Restaurant Group so owned. So, um, yeah, you know, they've got a large parent company. You, you like to see that. Um, you, you know, we want to see kind of who's on the guarantor, but, you know, I'd imagine it's Red Lobster. They can stand on their, their own uh, two claws, if you will. Um, I hope you understood that joke I just made, but no, they, they're very, uh, you know, it's a great restaurant group. It, it, it has a lot of, um, you know, as you mentioned earlier, a lot of loyal fans. So well known in many, many communities. Um, so I think it's a very strong tenant, you know, the restaurant, um, industry is tough, you know, coming out of COVID like we did, um, they saw, you know, they saw, they had issues, but as a tenant in a normal world, I think I think this is a strong tenant with a strong parent company. Yeah, hundred um, percent. So let's talk a little bit about the lease, the lease, the building, uh, just the high level details. So this is a ten thousand square foot building on two point two acres uh, on a great lot in Murfreesboro. Um, the building's a bit older, originally built in two thousand two. It has, however, been upgraded. I don't have the the exact year the renovations were done, but it's upgraded to the Red Lobster's new prototype. I think Red Lobster launched a new prototype in 2009, um, which you know, I think 90% of their Red Lobsters have already been upgraded. This is one of them. So it's, you know, it's got a fresh look. It's even though it's a 20 year old building, um, it's an absolute triple net, net lease. Um, a tenant is responsible for everything, including structure, including roof. Um, landlord has zero payments on this. So they just literally collect this rent check. Um, speaking of the rent check, it's 242,000 a year right now. Um, with a guarantee from a public uh, company guarantee. So the public company would be this Thai foods. Um, but I think the guarantee is by uh, the parent company of Red Lobster, which sits underneath them, which is Red Lobster something LLC. Can't remember, but um, that's who's guaranteeing it. So it's basically the 700 Red Lobsters uh, in America guaranteeing it. Um, this lease has 19 years left with four or five year options on the back end. This new lease started in December uh, 2015, so it's been going for a while. You know, this this Red Lobster's been there for a while. It's been there since 2002. Um, longstanding business. No real reason to assume why uh, you know things would get worse or why this business would go anywhere in the near future. So if you're gonna if you're gonna buy something, uh, buy this asset, um, you know you should you should assume you're buying it for a, a good period of time. It's, it's, it's not something you're going to have control of for a period of time. They typically, they, they actually do control it for the next 39 years. So, um, you'd be buying a red lobster cash flow cash flows for the foreseeable future. Basically you're betting on the biscuits. 
yeah, you're betting on the biscuits. You're betting on the biscuits and the all-you-can-eat shrimp. <laughs> so these guys are asking a six cap. Um, before I get into cash flows, let's do something a little different this time. We just go right down. So when we underwrite these things, really, there's there's three things that matter, right? Um, there's fair market value, there's intrinsic value, and there's value to you, right? So fair market value, when we look at these, what's fair market value? Basically, we're looking for comparable sales. We're looking for other Red Lobsters, other restaurants that are in the market that have sold, you know, with similar lease terms, with similar NOI. Um, we're just looking for traditional sales comps. What was the cap rate it sold at? What was the cap rate? You know, those few sales have been have been going at, and then say what's a fair cap rate for this for this restaurant, right? So when we look at this uh, analysis, right down here at the bottom, when we compare cap rates, right, sure. these are restaurant sales from the last two months. That's what we're doing. We're looking at what's the fair market, what's the fair market comparable value. This is not an intrinsic cash flow analysis. This is, this shouldn't tell you whether you should buy it or not. This just tells you if it's fairly priced in the market. So when we look at this one, um, these are restaurant sales the last two months. You have everything from an eight and a half cap down into the mid fours, right? But you've got a bunch here in the middle in this five and a half to, to seven range, right? So this one's priced at a six cap, you know, with 19 years left on the on the remaining term. That's a little bit above the line. It's it's a little bit of a discount to what the market's been, been getting on uh, full service restaurants. However, it's still a little bit more expensive than um, even better comparables, which are Red Lobsters. So in the last two months, we've had two Red Lobster sales, uh, similar lease terms. I think one was 17, I think both were actually 17 year lease, or, uh, years remaining on the lease. And they sold at a 6.3 and a 6.5 cap. Um, so, you know, that gives you a pretty good comparable. They're asking a six cap here that they would expect to close probably in that same range, somewhere in that 6.5 range um, based on today's fair market value. Hey, Tyler. Yeah. So quick question. D does this include QSRs? This doesn't, this does not include QSRs, although I think, uh, well, what's that? The majority of these are, are full serve restaurants, but okay. I think these three at the bottom uh, may have slipped in as QSRs. So I think one's a Panera Bread. Um, one is, what's the other one? I, I was looking at this earlier. One's a Panera Bread. I think these three are QSRs. I think that's dragging it down a little bit. But most of these are full serve. Cool. Well, we, we won't go deep on it, but I just I want to bring that up because you're not going to look at QSRs the same as, as full service, right? Um, you know, they're going to trade at different different caps. So just want to bring that up. Yeah, no, good point. Um, you know, if you know d data cleaning had been done uh, even more thoroughly, we probably got, got rid of those three and this line would move up a boat. You know, zero, maybe 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.1 percent or so. But most of these are full serve. So this is a pretty good picture of uh, the full service restaurant uh, sales comps for the last two months. Um, so that being said, you know, just to start our analysis with an idea of a fair market value in the in a th six to six and a half uh, cap rate range, um, we can look at cash flows, right? So operating wise, like we said, absolute triple net lease. Um, we're still putting a small reserve away for Winston's friends at the bank that want to see their, is it uh, their 4%, even on an absolute triple net lease, they want to see. Typically, want to see yeah, it's going to change. Yeah, it's going to change for a bank, but typically that's what I always that's, hear. Yeah. Um, so this one has 2% bumps a year, which is great to see in this net lease space. Um, typically you're getting 2% a year or you're getting 10% every five years. 2% a year is better. We've talked about this earlier, but just to recap, it's better by about a quarter of a cap rate. So about 25, 25 basis points. Um, if you have 2% versus 10% every five years. Um, I'm assuming a disposition for this one in year next renewal time. Uh, I'm assuming that, you know, we're going to evaluate our cash flows as if we got to the end of the lease. So we're going to discount the um, red lobster cash flows uh, for the full 19 years. And then we're going to look at a second scenario Sorry, and where they will renew. And then we're going to look at a second scenario where uh, we have to do an adaptive reuse. So if we look at two scenarios here, right? Um, scenario one is we get to the end. We actually make it all the way to the ni year 19. And Red Lobster decides uh, they want to renew. So they've got four five-year options. They renew. It's a five-year new five-year lease. Um, the NOI at that time, based on the lease structure, will be 352000 
dollars a year. I'm using an exit cap rate there of 6.95. Um, I'm assuming if we're going in at six, uh, assuming that the cap rate environment is the same as today, which it won't be, but without us skewing it up or down, we can just assume uh, five basis points a year increase in the ex uh, per year for the exit cap rate versus the going in cap rate because it's an older building, it's a shorter lease term. Um, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of things. Basically, that's it. It's an older building, it's a shorter lease term. So we should expect the cap rate that we can sell this thing at 19 years from now will be less than um, the cap rate that that we're getting that we're going in for today. Um, and then down here, scenario two, if we do an adaptive reuse. Hey, yeah, um, I think we got to make a correction there. You know, I think the, the comment you made was we can assume that the cap rate will be less than what we went into. It's it would actually be the cap rate is higher than what we are going into today. Okay. You know? Did I? Yeah. Did I say that? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, the cap, yeah. Um, and I think that's important to just remind everyone. There's a lot of folks that, that may be watching and, you know, it, it sometimes it is confusing that higher cap rates mean lower prices, right? So I think what you meant to say, we, we would assume that we're going to sell it at a lower price yeah. than what we're going to uh, buy today. So just wanted to kind of uh, make that correction. Yeah, you're 100%. I spoke incorrectly. We're going to we're planning to sell it at nearly 95 basis points higher cap rate, which would be a significantly lower price per uh, net operating income. The price will actually be higher because it's 19 years in the future. Um, but it'll be a lower price per unit of, of net operating income um, because the building is older and because the lease isn't, you know, the lease will be a five year renewable. Um, so scenario two is the adaptive reuse scenario, which is always, always quite difficult to do, especially when you're projecting out 19 years into the future, you know, what's going to, what's going to go there. Um, what we know is we have a 10,000 uh, square foot building, right? We know we're going to have some cost to, to adapt it to something, you know, could it be another full serve restaurant? Sure. Could it be, I don't know, Winston, what, what would you turn, what would you turn a red lobster into if it, if not an Applebee's or, or, you know, the obvious, uh, adaptive reuses? I have no idea what kind of sci-fi stuff will be available uh, in 19 <laughs> years from today, which, um, but, but, you know, all jokes aside, this is a great site. I think it's on 2.2 acres. There's a lot of things that could be done in 19 years. This may be mowed down and, uh, made into some sort of, you know, uh, um, tower, right? But I, I think the obvious and the, the best use is for um, a restaurant. You know, restaurants are typically, due to their HVAC uh, systems, are typically kind of a pain to retrofit into, say, like a medical office, which is what we play often, uh, you know, in this space. Excuse me, what we usually do in this space. Uh, we're actually in a process, signed the lease today, um on converting an a mexican restaurant into a medical office and so the big issue is just the hvac system so i think where we're at um on that build out was the conversions literally at like 120 bucks a foot but the 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 landlord is not taking all of that on right so um anyhow you know, you know, no landlord's typically going to do 100, you know, 120 a foot. So I think putting 50, 60 maybe in there um, would work. The tenant's going to have to come in and probably participate in that build, up, build out. Yeah, great. Um, so, yeah, I mean, assuming those numbers, assuming we could, we could get a tenant in at a, you know, comparable net operating income that Red Lobster would be paying, um, that 50 bucks a square foot we've got there, if you look right over here, in 19 years time, money based on, you know, our, our, our projections would be about 105 bucks a square foot in, in you know, in 2042, whatever it is. Right. So, um, you know, if all that comes to play, your, your, uh, net proceeds from the sale are going to be a bit less than if you just renewed go for a thousand less. Um, so that brings you to an average, uh, net sales revision of about 4.4.7 million. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, so we got a question. Um, someone has asked, how often do you hold this type of event? That was Desmond. So Desmond's asking, how often do you hold this type of event? Um, 
I don't fully understand the question. I, I believe you saying like, you know, what's the hold period on this? How long are you going to hold this before you, um, um, you know, dispose of the assets? So how long are you underwriting this? Are you doing this in year 19 or in year 10? Yeah, year 19. I'm doing it. I'm okay. doing it all the way to the end. Okay. So Desmond, to answer your question, um, he is underwriting this as if, um, you know, we've held on to it and the lease is now up and they're in their option period. Uh, but kind of a broader answer to your question is it depends on your situation. You know, do you, are you able to um, get a good return on this and then 1031 or you know, take that capital and reinvest it into a different asset class? So every individual has their own kind of tax situation and money situation. But for the purposes of this exercise, uh, we're taking it out to year 19. And I'll, I'll answer Desmond's Dem question in another way, in case he was, in case this is what he was asking. We do this every Tuesday at at uh, five thirty CST. We hold these events. Uh, so if you want to underwrite, if you want to see us uh, underwriting these deals every week, we're here every week on Tuesday. So good, I don't know which probably your question was was more Winston's Winston's uh, interpretation, but just in case you are excited to see us every week, uh, it's Tuesday at five thirty uh, Central. <laughs> good plug. So let me just pop this up. So, you know, we talked about disposition. We talked about um, operating cash flows acquisition. So here is basically what this looks like um, with 50% leverage. So an unlevered IRR on this deal for 19 years is just over 7%. That gives you an unlevered return on your capital of about 2.5, right? So you put... Uh, in this case, a million, sorry, you put 2 million in at the end, um, you know, you've, you've been paid back about 5 million, right. On this levered deal. Oh, sorry. 2.81 on the, on the levered one. Um, you can see that the levered IRR is less than the unlevered IRR. Why is that? Because the cost of the cost of the loan today, Winston, I mean, you, you told me this last week, it's up to 7.5% now. Um, it's pretty crazy. It's, you know, very difficult to have positive leverage on these deals, even a deal like this, that's not, you know, the lowest cap rate you've ever seen. Um, you know, any, any comments on, on that about, you know, loans yeah. getting up to 7.5%. Yeah. You know, listen, everyone's situation is different. Their banking relationships are different. And so it really just depends on like kind of where you are in your relationship and what bank you're using, et cetera. So the reason why we're doing seven and a half right now is because I was told, I think it was last week that, um, that, you know, on average, they're looking at, you know, seven to 8% in commercial real estate. Um, but I know people that are getting, you know, low sixes, mid sixes, right. But we're trying to be conservative. The, our goal here is just to kind of underwrite and do things conservatively. You know, if we're doing this for someone, we're going to we're going to do this and kind of take their their actual situation into account. Right. So um, and things are fluid right now. You know, they just raised another 25 bips the other day. Um, and so that's where we are. Fingers crossed they're done. And, uh, you know, these banks, these dead bodies under the water that are floating up to the top when all these banks, you know, come up to the surface and, and they see what they've done. Hopefully we're coming you know, right back down to, to oh. lower, lower interest rates. So yeah. we'll see, we'll see how this plays out over the next few months, but uh, ho hopefully we're, we're hitting the peak of these, uh, of these rates. Um, so it, as you can see here, right, our levered IRR is 6.75 in this scenario. Um, I'm just going to quickly uh, open another scenario here, you know, which is the, you know, in the case we're, we're able to get this thing. So um, if we were to discount these cash flows at a slightly higher rate than what they're asking, like, let's say we, let's say we brought up our, our purchase cap rate to 6.5, right? So if our suggested purchase cap rate, uh, based on this discount of 6.5, that's about in line with what they've been selling recently. Um, you know, let's assume we could get a six and a half loan instead of a seven and a half loan. You know, this is a more optimistic case. So we buy this thing a bit cheaper. We buy it at a 6.5 instead of a six. We're getting it. We're getting six and a half, um, uh, a six and a half percent rate for a loan. Now this thing is a, a levered IRR of 8.5, right? Instead of 6.75. So the range, you know, the, the return range that you're looking at for, for this asset is probably in there, right? On the low end, 
um, you'd be looking at a levered IRR in that 6.5 to 6.75 range. And then on the high end, you might be able to get eight and a half percent, you know, and then depending on, you know, exactly the structure of your loan and, and how, how you close, um, you'll be somewhere in the middle there. So eight and a half, you know, eight and a half IRR, 3.4 times your money when you're done. It's not, I don't I think that's terrible. Um, that's, that's, you know, pretty much the high end. Um, but, you know, if you're, if you were able to buy this a little bit cheaper and get it and get a decent loan, I, I don't think that's, I don't think that's a bad investment. And look, keep in mind, you know, when we're underwriting this, we're not taking into consideration anyone's, you know, current tax situation, right? There are other benefits to owning commercial real estate um, outside of just cash flows, right? And so, you know, because we cannot speak to everyone, everyone's situation, we just have to speak in, in pure numbers. But there are other benefits to owning commercial real estate. Uh, that everyone should be aware of. And um, you, know, you can use it. You know, there's a lot of dis- depreciation that you could potentially have here, some cost segregation, et cetera. So yeah, this, is that's just, great. this is just part of the story. That's a great point, man. I bring You, you just brought it back to, to know what we started at the beginning of the call, right? So there's three ways to, value, to evaluate real estate. There's the fair market value, which is sales comps. There's the intrinsic cash flow value, which is what we just did right here. And then there's the value to you, right? So that value to you is going to be different than this intrinsic cash flow value, depending on your tax situation, depending on your asset allocation, your portfolio. Maybe you need diversification into real estate. Um, you know, there's a lot of reasons why you would buy this, even though as an isolated asset, the intrinsic cash flows might not make might not make sense for everyone. For a specific person that needs a commercial real estate asset in their in their portfolio, who who wants those tax benefits, this might be a great asset, right? So that's the you always you always have to remember that, that third angle, which is, you know, what's it worth to you and why, right? Because you're gonna have different reasons than a generic um, intrinsic cash flow valuation. Well said. I think that's it for the for the sheet. Uh, you know, you want to say anything else about this one? Uh, I don't know, Tyler. Are you gonna buy it? Are you gonna yeah, what are your thoughts? Uh, let's put it on. Let's let's put it in our gambling book. Okay, so uh, I'm not. I, I I'm probably not a buyer just because I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I, I'm I, I, at this price. I think it'll trade in that six five range. Um, I don't know if I would buy it at the six five range. I don't know if if sit down restaurants. Tough, tough for me, man. I, I, it's, not, it's just not not my style to to, to buy something like this. But uh, that has, says nothing about the intrinsic the intrinsic value. That's just me being uh, a hard head and 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 wanting to stick things that I know. I don't know if I'd want to if I'd want to have this one. But I think it I think it trades at a six five. So I think you're probably um, pretty close, right? I, I'd say probably a six five. Uh, I think it's sub seven. Probably trades that are, you know, all cash or majority cash. Um, to someone who who believes long term in, um, you know, Thai Union Group and Red Lobster, right? And so, um, I think it has a great site. I, I like the site. I think it's two point two acres. It's big enough to do multiple things with on a on a kind of redevelopment or adaptive reuse in the future. Um, so, so I love the site. I love the market. Um, it's got retail all around it. Looks good. Um, personally, I'm not a huge sit down restaurant like investor. You know, it's not it's not you know where I am today. But I do see value in this one. Um, it's a great tenant, you know. And, and, and unless someone can send me something saying that uh, you shouldn't invest in Red Lobster, which by the way, if you buy this. I'm pretty sure you get like free biscuits every time you go. Um, And that's not just if you buy it, by the way, but it it is an added perk. If you just go to Red Lobster, they give you the biscuits, unlimited amounts, which is also very unhealthy, but satisfying when you're there. (laughs) The point is, is there's a certain person there that that believes in this. um, And I think rightfully so. Strong tenant, great market, great site. Um, I don't remember if the access was very good. I think the access was okay, not like fantastic, but it was good enough. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I, I think it's a buy, but it's not a buy for me. I think it's a buy for someone who needs to place capital today. Um, and they like commercial real estate and they believe that sit down restaurants do have a, a, a good future. Um, and, and I do. I think I think sit down restaurants will always have a future. Um, personally, I don't think and it's evident by uh, what's happening today that po- in a post covid world that, you know, everyone's going to stay home. I think people want to go out. Uh, they they want to have dinner with family. They want to go meet up. And, and I think there's always going to be a place for, for these type of restaurants. So that's my that's my position. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Good man, I like it. No, you're. I think you're 100 right. It's. Uh, I think it's a great deal. I think it's great, great land. Um, it's definitely a, a good asset for someone who's who's looking for this type of asset. So, cool deal. Agree. Well, hey man, uh, something I forgot to say on uh, when we started was you you passed your CPA exam one. Congratulations. That's CFA. Cool. Yeah, what is it? C- yeah, not CPA. CFA. My bad. I'm not. Um, I'm not an accountant. I don't. I yeah. don't pretend to be one. <laughs> so congrats congrats on that good job yeah uh, thanks bro yeah well hey if anyone's interested and they want to uh either purchase this red lobster in uh, you know murfreesboro tennessee or just discuss their their situation um in anything you know triple net or single net net lease uh give us a shout you know where to find us all right see you next week tyler all right cheers man cheers